Well, welcome in the name of Jesus to the Ignite Adventuring Series. My name is Robert Pears. We're living in historical, prophetic, and perilous times. In fact, as we read the Word, we discover that they're going to get worse. And in fact, it'll get to the place where men's hearts will fail them for fear. I don't know how long we've got, but I do know this. Dave explained that in the day of trouble, you will hide me in the secret place. I want to share with you five powerful keys regarding this hour and how you can make the secret place your abiding place. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. I truly pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that each person would be so provoked to have such an intense passion for you, a pressing in to know you. Holy Spirit, come and open our eyes and ears to hear and move upon us in this hour, Father, that we be caught up, consumed in you. Open the word to us. Father, I thank you for the word living, filled with fire in our bones. I thank you for a now word, a right word that ministers to each person listening and brings them, Father, fresh hope a living hope in Jesus. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus we pray, and the church said amen. Now, if you go to Psalm 91, you see all the benefits and all the protections afforded for one who comes and makes that secret place his abode, his permanent residence, and comes under the shadow of his wings. There are things we've got to lay hold of to understand that. Jesus, well, let me step back. We build upon the imagery, of course, of the tent and uh, sorry, the tabernacle and the temple, and that the Holy of Holies is the place where the presence of God was. However, it's so holy that you and I were disqualified, and there's nothing you could do ever to get close to that. But Jesus. And we're told that we have a new and living way through the blood of Jesus that speaks of better things and brings us in. So we come in. Truly trusting in the blood, looking to the blood. And I would pray you check out some of my videos to get a better revelation, understanding of the blood. But the first thing I want you to hear is that we must hear him calling us by name. That blood speaks of this. Listen to this in Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When we understand that he looks at you, how precious you are. Read the rest of that chapter. That through the blood of Jesus, he calls you by name. Jesus is my sheep. Hear my voice. And he also said he calls us by name. The calling to come into the secret place where he's pointing to the blood, the price paid. So there's no boasting in you. There's no building upon you. And Smith Wigglesworth said this, All thoughts of holiness are God's. All manner of loving kindness and tender mercy are his. Now you can understand in Psalm 63 where David said, Your loving kindness is better than life. Because as I come in, there's a changing in my thinking. And I'm getting the revelation of his mercies towards me, demonstrated in the blood, revealed in the blood, so that I'm not looking at myself, not trying to qualify myself, but I'm looking to the blood which speaks of his mercy, and it speaks personally to you and I. That Jesus paid the price for you. He so loves you. He's calling you because you. he knows you. And he knows that you need him because he created you. Smith went on to say, Oh, that is a wonderful place where all of your springs are in Him. All of your desires are in Him. And all you long for is Him. That's when we start to get in. When we suddenly, as John said in his first letter, If the love of the world or the things of the world are in you, the love of God is not. Are you sold out, passionately pursuing Him? Because when you are, behind the scenes, you seek Him. You want Him. Because see, when no one's looking, the secret desires of my heart, because we have a secret place inside of us. And I can hide the lusts of my flesh. I can hide the hurts and everything else. And I can put on my church face and look good in front of you. And you go, wow. But God sees the truth. 
And when I'm here in that secret place, I can do whatever I want. And what has heart share, captured and carries greatest authority in my life, speaks loudest to me, is what's got my heart. What is the secret place of my heart? When it is His. And when Jesus occupies the throne of the secret place inside your heart, then behind the scenes, you only think of Him. And it gets to the place where it's so big that now all of your life belongs to Him. And that, that what you do is the outflow of this life. Because all I think about is Him. I'm consumed. And every day He comes and gives me a greater revelation of His love for me. He touches me. My second point you have to recognize is that you need Him. Jesus turns and rebukes the church of Laodicea, saying you have all, and you think you are secure and good because you are earthly, and you're missing the fact that you're a wretch and naked. You're missing it. And many of us, because we look at earthly things, we are not recognizing, and we're all just covering that hole inside our hearts. May the Holy Spirit so bring us a conviction of that our heart is missing this living relationship that none of these things satisfy but Him. And that we would get our eyes on the very thing, the very place, which is Jesus, and that through Him come to the place where we have discovered that which is better than life. Raptured up, caught up in Him. Smith said, all weaknesses are made for us that we might be in that place of absolute helplessness. For when we are weak, then we are strong. All divine acquaintance with Him today will put us in the place where we may be able to be broken, empty vessels ready for Christ's use. God is shaking all things on this earth. All the things that were our security, everything that we looked to, hoped on, trust on, shaken. So we're coming to a place of weakness, brokenness, and we got to understand that God wants us to come into the secret place as you feel that empty hole, brokenness, emptiness in you, that when you are weak, you are strong in Him. The coming into this place, this is what you need. You need this relationship with Him. Everything else, He can fix, resolve, once this is back. Smith said, the excellency of the power of the life of Christ in the mortal body, subduing it in every way, till the Spirit is full of life and vitality in the body, that Christ, that God, and the Holy Ghost may be illuminating the whole body. The body is there just as a temple, that all the glory of God should roll back to God. Now I'm in a place, because I recognize Him and His power in me. I need that, that in my life all glory goes to Him, no longer to me. The world needs to see real Christians, not just those that put on a church face that are empty and have no substance, no life to them. The world sees the false and it has run from it. And it's time it saw the real that has a life because all of us in this life go through and are struggling and are broken. But in that secret place, God makes you whole and puts a life in you, a, the life that's in Him, the abundant life. And that abundant life should shine forth through you and the world should see it. Number three, we must lose our earthly identity and lay hold of our heavenly one. We now live, as you read Romans 8, according to a new order, the order of the Spirit. We're not looking at things that are temporal, but the things that are eternal, spiritual. The Word of God is a spiritual word and we're told it has to be spiritually apprehended. My mind can't comprehend this. And if I try to, I walk in knowledge about, but never experience in knowing. So God is calling us to recognize that you are sons and daughters, children of the Most High God. Smith said, are you ready? What for? That you may come to the banquet house with a great faith. Not stop, nothing stopping you. Pressing in, laying hold of, believing all things, and you will have a time of great refreshing as you come expressing yourself to God. So that my life now is living in worship in this hour. God preparing before you in the midst of your enemies a table that overflows. Because He has no supply chain issues. He is able to meet every single need. See, we use Him 
for what we want. And we've lost sight of the fact that we are His. And we are not complete until we are in the place of holy surrender, knowing Him and being known by Him. Smith said, not seeking your own, not seeking your place, but all of your body giving place to the glorifying of Christ. Set free, loose, created by, and made likened unto Him in this glorious order. The time is late. It's time to sell out. It's time to make a difference and get a hold of that crown. It's time for us to occupy, to step up, and be the real. Stop looking at our identity on earth and realize we're looking for a city that's not on this earth. We're passing through and our citizenship is of heaven. We're not of this earth. We are heavenly beings, raised up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. We belong to Him. And the Holy Spirit wants to bear witness with you that who you are. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined His ear and heard my cry. He brought me up and of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. So radically changed because God always has a lifting. God always has this transformation where He's taking us and He's bringing us out of something to bring us into something greater. And He wants to make your life a living testimony where you've been wholly set free, that you have life and that abundant. Smith said, are you ready? What for? That God shall be all in all, and you will lose your identity in the perfection of His glorified purity. You will be lost to everything else except Him. And when we walk pure, clean, before Him, we're able to enter in and bring real worship, real prayer, and be effective on this earth. Pure, not contaminated of this world, but pure, His, holy, sold out, where we are all in all, Him. Number four, daily we must press forward. Many of us experience or have an encounter, and it's good, it's wonderful, but we never keep going. We think and look back of the days of glory in the past, but God always wants something better for you today and even greater tomorrow. I look at this. With many such parables, he was speaking the word to them, so as far as they were able to hear. Mark 4, 34. How many things does God desire to say to us, but we're not able to hear? If you get in the secret place, there's so much that over time your ears hear, your eyes see that he's able to share. And there's so many things that we've walked in, all the damage and hurt we've caused, all the destruction He could keep us out of. And we could walk in this final hour blessed and being a blessing. Smith said this, We must not stop this holy pursuit. We must remember that whatever shall have happened in these days is happening for our benefit. If it deals with the flesh, with the carnal senses at all, with the human spirit, it is God as has to have a right of way till we live by the Spirit. I look at the old me so easily held by hurts and pains, and that the enemy could just touch this area, this area, and I was destroyed. And I had to learn to come to such a place where, God, it's all yours. And here, in the pressing forward, I do not look to how I feel, but recognize as I'm going through, God, if I'm hurting and I'm going through this pain, let it produce life for another because I want nothing holding me back, but I want this pressing forward. And I will so encourage you, the more you press forward, the easier it becomes. The more you go every day, more of you. When you start each day, you, you start as you mean to continue in this pursuit of Him. Every day you get stronger. Every day your mind's more renewed. Every day you walk into greater liberty. Smith said, when people cease to pursue and they turn aside and spoil all that has been before, what's up? 
They were all right in pursuit. They would have been all right in continuing in the pursuit. There's not a place in the scripture that you're allowed to drop the weapons which are spiritual attainment. You must see that you must denounce the powers of evil, the powers of darkness, the powers that would bring you into bondage. Denounce them all. You have been created now, filled now, sustained in power. You go right in with God. Never turn again to the things around about you, setting your heart just upon Him as Jesus set His heart upon the cross. In that final hour, final period, Jesus set His face as flint going to Jerusalem. For the joy set before Him, He endured that cross. You couldn't distract Him for it because He was going. He knew His direction. Let us not be distracted in this hour. But I so encourage you that every day you press forward. As you do, I am assuring you, I'm guaranteeing you because of the word that you get stronger. And every inch that you gain, you build upon. You go deeper and further. The word is clear in James that draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. And you can go as deep as you want. You can get as close to him as you want. Don't settle but let a hold of everything God has. Let there always be a pressing because he who sows to the Spirit from the Spirit will reap. So stand in the harvest of pressing forward. Realize that I'm standing today in the harvest of what I did yesterday. And tomorrow I'll stand in the harvest of what I did today. I want more. I want more impact. I want more lives touched. I want to see more of Jesus. I want to glorify Him more in this hour. We're in the final hour. Let's make a big thing of it. Let us take ground. Let us reach lives. Let us finish this race on fire for God. Finally, number five, there must be death to the old. John 12, verse 24, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So we love the fact that it's all free, but we forget there is a cost. There's a cost of laying aside the old. There's a cost of dying. There's a cost of taking up your cross and following Him. Every day, that choice that we must make, that God, I choose you. I choose your ways. I choose your thoughts. And Father, I won't allow my thoughts, my feelings, my hurts to speak louder than your word. I will not be held captive by the enemy or my opinions or my rights. I'm yours. I trust wholly in you. I'm moving forward. I will finish with this. Smith said this. If you get this truth into your heart, you will not be moved anymore by anything. This is just the difference between the human and the divine. If human is here, predominant, then division, sorry, divine vision will be dimmed. When the divine has full control, then all earthly cares and anxieties pass away. If we live in the spirit, we are over all human animal nature. If we reach the climax that God's son had come into, we shall also be in the place of peace. In this hour, we can choose to be held captive to this world or dare to step in by recognizing that we're to walk by a new order, the order of the Spirit. We're spirit beings. And so our life must be lived in the Spirit, in the Word, in prayer, yielded to, surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Every day taking new ground, every day pressing forward, going after Him. Because if we allow the cares, the worries, the concerns of this world, they will draw life from us and drain us and bring us down. But we are to press on, press forward. The secret place of His presence is meant to be your abiding place. When you reside there, you are kept in perfect peace. That Jesus says, in this world you have trials and tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome it. This is the place that you can endure all things. This is the place where I am weak, He is strong. Here's the place where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is the place where there's therefore no now condemnation because I'm in Christ. This is the place where I'm raptured, caught up in Him. My identity is so closely connected with Him, you can't see me any other way. We're in the final hour, the final sprint. 
Let us sell out and live for the Lord. Develop your secret place life. Go after Him. We're going to be doing a lot more videos on the secret place. We've done a whole lot. Check them out. We're going to do some new ones to give some fresh touch, fresh vision so that you would understand your inheritance through the blood of Jesus. And I just pray, Father, in the name above all names, give each person an understanding, a deep revelation of the blood of Jesus, what it means that we might stand, Father God, in that revelation, pressing in to know you through the blood of Jesus. Father, that all honor, all glory goes to the blood that we would understand the price paid for us through the blood. We would hear your voice calling us by name. That, Father, you would become our all and all, our everything in this hour. Sold out for you. Filled with your life. Surrendered to you. Holy Spirit working in us, transforming us in this hour. Filling us with the divine life. Father, we want to know you. Jesus, we want truly, you are everything. You mean everything to us. We are pursuing you. We're going after you in this hour. Come and touch us once again. Come, Holy Spirit, and work in us again. Soften our hearts. Truly give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and let us know the living God. Let us bring you glory, Jesus, in this hour. Father, I thank you. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the power, all the praise. In the name above all names, in that name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Well, if this ministered to you, blessed you, would you please like, share, and subscribe as you do so you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google to reach more people, to see people walking in this final hour, sold out, living for Jesus. Amen. Would you also consider joining our prayer partnership? It costs you nothing. Go to GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com for more information. Until then, till we see you again, I pray that you would understand that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. You are loved, appreciated, and prayed for. Oh, hallelujah. This is such an hour. Such an hour. Recognize you were called for such a time as this. So let us rise up. Let us be the children of God. And let us be salt and light in this hour. In that name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Thank you.